This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. And you're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam, streaming at DCAUReview.com and on your favorite podcast app. Get charged up for action that'll shock your system. Tell me that's not cool. An unstoppable superhero and his crew embark on impossible missions and will bring mutated villains to justice. When static's in the house, bad guys better step off. Pull the plug on crime with the adventures of Static Shock. Yeah! Hey everybody, welcome to episode 297 of the DCAU Review. I am one of your hosts, Cal, and with me, my good brother, Liam. Liam, we are continuing here in our month of February. It is Black History Month. It's also Static Month here, and we are excited to cover yet another Static Shock episode uh, this week, as we uh, last week... We, uh, we had a, a, a fun episode that I think, uh, plot-wise, that turned out to be one of the more surprisingly enjoyable episodes that you and I uh, have had uh, with our review of The Usual Suspect. Uh, if you have not listened to that one yet, uh, check that one out, a Len Yuli penned episode, A Friend of the Show. So check that review out in the archives, last week's episode. This week, Liam, we are continuing as we, uh, we really only have season three and four episodes left that we have not yet reviewed, and uh, we have another one. On here uh it's definitely another interesting premise i will say that uh, as we cover another <laughs> episode of static shock this week that's right so we uh, we have an episode called showtime to talk about this week and it is uh all about uh delving into the world of superheroes and reality television so uh, a lot to talk about with uh with this one but of course we have a few uh items to get out of the way before we get into our plot recap that is right, Liam. We will, of course, remind the folks at home, supporting the podcast is as easy as leaving a five-star review on your favorite podcast app. And if you leave one on the Apple Podcast app with a little blurb uh, telling people what you enjoy about the podcast, if it's five stars, you live within the continental United States and we read it on air, qualify for a prize. So leave a podcast review this week and uh, and we will be sure to follow up with you if you leave a five-star review uh, and get you your prize. Uh, in the meantime, Liam, we will, of course, get the official IMDb synopsis for this week's episode, which is, as you mentioned, called Showtime, which aired here in the United States uh, on March the 22nd, 2003, meaning we are just a few short weeks here uh, for this original airing of our review uh, of the 21 year anniversary of this episode's debut. And we will, of course, remind the good folks at home. The podcast and the specifically the IMDB synopsis is brought to you by The Pod Tower. Head over to youtube.com slash The Pod Tower today and subscribe. And not only will you get our entire podcast catalog, every single episode we've done, plus bonus episodes all in one convenient place, but you also get a pair of additional podcasts at no extra cost. That's right. You get the entire catalog of the Tim Talk podcast and the ongoing Jump on the Batwagon series from the lovely folks at the Watchtower Database, all in one convenient location. Head over today to youtube.com slash the pod tower and subscribe for free, by the way, today. That's right. So this is the synopsis for Showtime, which is written by Alan Burnett and Courtney Lilly, directed by Question Mark, because once again, there was no director credited. Music by Richard Wolf and animation by Dong Wu. And that synopsis reads as such. Reality television has a new star, Static Shock. In the meantime, he and Gear face the new villain, Starburst. Super... <laughs> I'm reading this out written, just to be clear. In the meantime, he and Gear face the new villain Starburst, superpowers remarkably similar to Static. <laughs> All right, so uh, a couple things. One, immediate fail because you said the name of the character is Static Shock. That is not his name. His mm -hmm. name is Static. Mm hmm made very clear the show is called stack shock so immediate f you didn't even not only did you not read the book you didn't even skim the wikipedia articles <laughs> uh, also just again maybe also written by someone who english is not their first language uh because 
Or maybe they were so hastily writing this awful review, they just omitted multiple words. Could be. They were uh, they were too excited. But <laughs> there it is, the official IMDb synopsis for this episode. <laughs> uh, and uh, I guess we, we, we got to do a little bit more of the heavy lifting on explaining what actually happens this week. That is right, Liam. We kick things off with a, uh, a little bit of a street fight that is occurring between uh, the returning Puff and Onyx, who we have not mm-hmm. seen in quite some time, but uh, are once again revisiting the the uh, streets of Dakota as a little fight is happening between Static Gear, Puff, and Onyx, who are uh, doing some late night shopping, it would appear. We get uh, some nighttime scenes, actually, uh, as we'll talk about maybe in visuals here, but a lot of, uh, a lot of action ha- occurring in the evening bookending this episode. And so uh, as static and, uh, and gear uh, figure out a way to handle both puff and onyx, they are uh, initially potentially overwhelmed, but uh, thanks to a little bit of gears gear and uh, some static ingenuity, they're able to defeat both of the villains. And that's when uh, static looks up and they are in the heart of the downtown shopping district of, uh, of Dakota, an area I'm not sure that we visited before, but there are giant neon billboards everywhere. And uh, one of the neon billboards happens to be advertising a brand new show called heroes. Not that one, not the failed (laughs) NBC uh, the show starring uh, Hayden Penetier and uh, the guy that played the senator on The Office. And it's Rocky's coming... son. Rocky's son was in it, too. That's true. <laughs> Sorry, can't leave out Rocky's son. He's, uh, I think, more modern day people would know him from the This Is Us television show also. Mm-hmm. He had a, mm-hmm. some heartbreaking role in that, from what my understanding. Never seen it, but that's what I understand. But uh, yes, uh, th- all of those characters, it's not that show. It's a different show. In fact, <laughs> this is a reality television show that's being advertised uh, much to his own surprise uh, starring none other than Static. Say it loud. We bad and we proud. You know, I always knew being a superhero would give you a big head, but that is ridiculous. Hey, it's me. Coming soon, Heroes, a Bernie Rast production. Starring Static? Looks like you got your own TV show. Since when? We uh, we learn that this uh, show is set to debut, and we get a little bit of a cliffhanger before we get our credits. And then coming out of the credits, we are introduced to, I think, what might be one of my favorite characters going forward on this show, and that is uh, the the character of Bernie Rast. And uh, Bernie is introduced as a film producer, uh, I guess in this case as a television producer, who is uh, sort of your prototypical, from what I understand, a high-strung director, as he's uh, screaming on a cell phone uh, about uh, what is and isn't acceptable and how he's uh, very close to signing Static. It's all but done. The ink is all but dry. They're just waiting for Static to show up. In the meantime, an intern uh, walks in and uh, he's pretty dismissive of this intern, not only dismissive of him, uh, he calls him, calls him by the wrong name and uh, doesn't bother to, to know that. And then berates him for uh, not, not visually verifying that the coffee that he brought him, it contains soy milk rather than whole milk. I just got to dot a couple of eyes and cross some T's, baby. Static's as good as it. Now tell that pretty wife of yours I said hello. And we'll do lunch next week. All right. We do believe whatever you can see, you can achieve if you keep it in the loop. Is this soy milk in here? I, um, ordered it with soy. But you didn't personally witness them pour the soy milk into my coffee. Well, I, I, I um... Take this back. And this time, make sure it's soy milk. Even if it means climbing behind the counter and pouring it yourself. Got that, Bradley? It's... Brandon, whatever. Um, Mr. Rast, I-, I was just wondering if you'd had a chance to read my script yet. Maybe I'll get to it this weekend. Well, uh, see, the thing is, you you've been saying that for the past five months now. And... Look, kid, there are more important things going on around here right now. 
and one of them happens to be standing in the window. And then uh, at the very end here, we get uh, this character, Brandon, who is the is the intern, uh, requests to find out whether or not uh, Bernie may have uh, taken a look at his script that he sent him, his screenplay. And uh, Bernie said that uh, it's, it, it's he hasn't gotten to it yet. It's on his schedule of things to do, but he's more concerned about uh, more important things at this time. And uh, that's when... Uh, Static shortly thereafter shows up and uh, sort of has a has a, a face to face with Bernie, uh, to t- trying to figure out just how in the world he could be advertising that Static's going to be the star of this show when uh, when Static hasn't agreed to do anything. And Static is at least initially dismissive of the idea and shows uh, shows little to no interest. But then Bernie tugs on the heartstrings a little bit by opening the window and pointing down to a group of kids that are standing around. Uh, below the building saying that uh, static needs to be a role model for these children for the next generation that want to look up and see a hero sorry mr rast it's not for me of course not it's for them the street kids the kids with no future they need hope a role model someone like you even if this show helped one of them just one wouldn't it be worth it and all you want to do is follow me around with your cameras You won't even know we're there. I'm bored. You're supposed to look bored. Yeah, but for how long? Ras paying us 10 bucks an hour. Who cares? We cut down to the kids that are having a conversation and it's revealed (laughs) that Bernie Bernie has actually paid them to stand there and look sad and bored uh, as a way to uh, manipulate Static into signing this contract. What a, what a brilliant, what a brilliant move. What a, just a... (laughs) hilarious it's so funny uh yeah it's it's a it's a really good bit and then yeah I, this as we were kind of talking before we went on the air this episode as we'll as we'll get to even more probably but you're really hitting all of like the the cliches whether you're you know whether you're a hollywood insider or not you know the guy who's upset about his latte not being perfect and mm-hmm. the high strung producer who's promising the world before he you know before he knows he can deliver it and then in this case it's like i'm sure there's a lot of uh you know athletes and and actors and and stuff who have signed on to projects you know after being told oh you know think of all the kids who will look up to you and all that kind of stuff so it feels like we're hitting a lot of those those sort of uh those uh things that i'm sure are very commonplace if you are a an actor or a personality working out in uh, in the world of hollywood here in these just in these opening couple of minutes <laughs> Yeah, they are hitting all the all the notes there for sure. But we cut back to the garage where uh, where Static is breaking the news to Richie that uh, they are going to be TV stars. And while initially taken aback and maybe not on board, Static points out the uh, the selling points that that uh, that Bernie had had uh, had given him and and it ultimately sold him on the on the idea. Uh, Richie does have some concerns, but uh, ultimately says, hey, it could be a good thing. It could be fun, uh, especially if they're filming them, uh, you know, o- only filming them during the uh, during their fights. What's the worst that could happen? So uh, our next scene, we cut to Static uh, arriving on the set for his uh, his initial fitting. And I, speaking of uh, cliches, I think uh, one of the stagehands or I don't know what the technical term is, grips maybe, is uh, is helping Static get mic'd up. And uh, is also very dismissive and rude to Static uh, as he fits him with this uh, headset microphone that and camera that's supposed to be able to pick up his dialogue and also film at the same time. I need some dread cheese, Stack. You're in my life. That's it. Give me heroic. Yeah, that's it. More iced tea? Love some. I love your mask. It really sets off your eyes. Thank you. I designed it myself. No, oh, brother. Everyone thinks they're a star. What's all this? This here's your optic camera. And that guy there's the microphone. They're powered by this transmission box. Make sure this guy's on all the time. That too much for you, Flyboy? No problem. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the co-star of this show. Save it. What's wrong? The studio guards wouldn't let me through. They thought I was a delivery boy. And uh, that's when we get gear 
uh, bursting in. And uh, unfortunately, Gear is not having the same lack, uh, <laughs> living the life of luxury that that uh, Static is when it comes to his experience with Hollywood. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty clear already who uh, that uh, that no one on set thinks much of uh, of Gear and his contributions to the uh, to Team <laughs> Static, and and Static himself is so wrapped up in uh, his sort of pampering that he's receiving that he's not uh, he's not exactly doing much to uh, dispel those uh, those tough feelings that Richie is feeling. But uh, from there, we hear as they uh, they go off onto patrol finally. And uh, Bernie Rast is following them in a helicopter with a camera crew, complaining that there hasn't been any action. They finally see a uh, a metahuman alert from from Gear uh, from Backpack goes off, and they go and find this new villain called a uh, Starburst, who seemingly who seemingly has very similar powers to Static. And uh, he's uh, he's robbing a bank, and Static and Gear spring into action. And uh, it's pretty clear that they're very evenly matched. But uh, given that uh, Static has a little earpiece and a camera and this whole camera crew watching him, he has uh, he has Bernie in his ear yelling at him to uh, <laughs> to make the fight more exciting. So rather than try to uh, figure out a plan or figure out how Starburst's powers are working, he goes uh, he goes flying in gung ho. And other than a little bit of property damage, doesn't really uh, accomplish much. And he and uh, he and Gear are left kind of being read the riot act by Bernie for having a, a disappointing first show. And as they uh, they return back to their little hideout, the uh, the gas station of solitude, they're uh, they're both pretty uh, they're pretty irritable, and uh, they kind of have this big blow up at this point. Richie is rightfully pointing out what a what a jerk Virgil is being and how he's ignoring him and he's not taking anything seriously and he's more worried about looking good for the cameras than he is for actually helping people and so here we get it we got to do the the best friends breakup <laughs> episode at least once a season I guess and here's this one so uh, Richie and Virgil uh, decide they're dissolving the partnership Richie's quitting the show and uh, Virgil decides he's going to take it on, uh, t- continue on on his hey. own. Hey, man, relax. I can't get over how strong that Starburst guy was. Every time I amped up my power, he did me one better. If we'd put our heads together, I'm sure we would have come up with something. What does that mean? You shouldn't have gone after him like that. Well, someone had to do something. That someone didn't have to do it all by himself just to show off for the cameras. Oh, I get it. You're jealous because the show's about me. I could care less about the show. I wish I was never even part of it. No one's making you. I was a solo act way before you came along. Well, if that's how you feel, maybe I shouldn't be involved. Tell Rast I quit. As uh, as he continues to film the show and they go into another uh, a, a second attack against Starburst, this time in sort of like a... Okay, cause they're at like a pa- power. Oh no, they're at they're at like a platinum mine or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, they there's like big silver bars of something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I thought I I couldn't tell if they were trying to say that this was a a bank also, and this is like a bank that has silver bars in their <laughs> in their vault or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah, it wasn't very clear what it was. Yes, but yeah, they make a note that Starburst is upgrading. He's trying to steal something more valuable, so he's stealing these big silver or platinum bars, uh, chasing, and, and Static gives chase. They're they're continuing to battle. It seems like uh, Static's come up with a brilliant idea, which is to tie himself up in power lines and hit, uh, hit uh, Starburst with some sort of mega electric shock which uh, seems to work for a second, knocks Starburst right out of the sky, but then uh, Starburst seems to be even more powerful than ever coming out of that blast, knocks Static down again, leaves him tied up, looking like a fool. There's a a sort of an electromagnetic pulse that goes off that nearly knocks the helicopter with Bernie and the cameraman out of it. So there's sort of, as we we come back from break, we we realize that the Static's kind of been made a fool. We see like a newspaper clipping of him all tied up and i don't know how they got that pic i guess bernie like sold a picture to the he screenshotted it yeah he screenshotted it right a funny bit <laughs> when you realize that the only person who could have gotten this picture of static tied up in the power lines is is bernie who's making the show about him which is a nice <laughs> little unspoken bit there but yeah we see uh we cut back to the hawkins household where sharon and robert are on on the couch seeing a commercial for the show and kind of remarking that uh 
that they can't believe that static would agree to do something like this, but uh, that they're that Sharon at least is still definitely going to watch the show. And uh, at, at that point, Richie comes over and goes up to, uh, to see Virgil and they, they sort of calm each other down and both apologize. I kind of feel like Richie doesn't have much to apologize for, but he apologizes anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and they, they decide they're going to, to team up again to stop this starburst once and for all. And as they uh, as they continue to uh, discuss it, they they sort of make a discovery, which is that maybe Starburst isn't a uh, a bang baby or a metahuman after all, and that maybe there's a technological reason that all of uh, that he's able to uh, absorb and rechannel all of Static's power. Right here, I'm doing fine, but here he's kicking my butt. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything about that. The wires. That's got to be where he's getting your powers from. But how are they being transmitted from you to him? I have a pretty good idea. Yeah, so they sneak back on set to sort of do some reconnaissance and uh, see if they can review some of the footage from the fight. And in the review, uh, they're able to do one of those click enhance zoom things that all uh, media has has determined that video uh, can be done mm-hmm. with video since like, you know, 1985 <laughs> or whatever, where you just yell computer enhance and it works. But this time it's just with a click of a mouse gear is able to do so with the footage and determines that uh, perhaps maybe it isn't that Starburst also has the same type of powers that Static does as uh, as they first assumed but they, upon review it appears that he has some sort of device on him that is uh, perhaps channeling and uh, allowing him to absorb Static's powers as Static shoots shoots them at him. So uh, with that, we get to Static and Gear sort of suiting up and uh, coming up with their own strategy off screen uh, just in time uh, they he contacts uh, Bernie and uh, asks them for one more film session this is after Bernie was pretty much done with them saying that uh, his he- hero isn't being very heroic in their show but uh, Static <laughs> promises him uh, a, a grand finale as it were so uh, we get uh, we get the crew back out in their helicopters and Static and uh, out once again, and wouldn't you know it, showing up just in time uh, during the filming is Starburst, of course. And uh, this time, Static says that uh, rather than fighting him, he's figured out his plan, and that he rips off the microphone and uh, and the battery pack that was uh, attached to him, realizing that this device was somehow channeling his powers to the battery pack that Starburst was was wearing. So he <laughs> destroys this microphone and the, the battery pack with it. And uh, at that point, Starburst uh, clearly becomes weaker and uh, they are able to overwhelm and capture him fairly easily. But this is uh, this is before. Did we talk about where Starburst uh, knocks the this is was the prior scene where Starburst knocks the helicopter out of the sky and Static has to lift it a la Superman? I can't remember uh, if that I was, think this it happens twice. So it, there's like a <laughs> there's one point where he does like the big uh, the big like shield which sets off the pulse that knocks it back. And then I think it's during this this fight scene where he where he shoots it and Static has to has to save it. But yeah, yeah. we get uh, we get some the, the electricity makes you strong. We we learned that here. Uh, he's he's it's kind of like when he had to save the statue from falling over. I guess mm-hmm. or making the, or animating the statue. It's just like all right. I guess at this po- at this point your your electromagnetic powers can do whatever you need to. So through sure. that uh, through that he's able to lift and uh, and and bring the helicopter down to safety. <laughs> uh we uh we get a little bit of of course we get the uh the the wrap up as the helicopter hits the ground safely and and Bernie's able to offload celebrating the incredible footage that he's been able to capture and uh, he's able to get one final shot of static and gear standing back to back but uh with their with their super villain now in uh, in custody we do a, a very scooby-doo-esque unmasking of our villain and starburst turns out to be none other than brandon uh the <laughs> the the page that uh, was previously getting uh bernie his his coffee first get me a shot of the heroes okay now get in there tight on the villain yes smile pal 
Brandon. Brandon, you jerk. You can't even get my name right on camera. But why? I needed money to produce my screenplay, which you never even bothered to read. Thanks a lot. If only you had just paid me even the slightest amount of attention, I might... Yellow. No kidding. Well, has the network seen the ratings? What? No, 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 no. no. Will you tell them I expect 26 more episodes or I'm walking? Do you hear me? Bernie Rast is walking! And I put real milk in your coffee every time. Do you hear that? Whole milk! And uh, Bernie is is taken aback, despite continuing to call him by the wrong name, uh, taken aback as to why he would do such a thing. And uh, he recounts that the reason why is he needed to, he needed to fund his uh, his screenplay in order for it to get looked at because Bernie wouldn't give him the attention that he was asking for. And uh, Bernie is taken aback and says that, ironically, in this moment, Bernie gets a, a phone call, which uh, further diverts his attention away, uh, seemingly, again, reinforcing that Brandon is means nothing to him and has, uh, has, has no hold over his attention at that point. In which case, we get Brandon, his final revenge is announcing that uh, every time that he ever got Bernie coffee, he made sure that whole milk was in it. And that's uh, truly the most dastardly thing I think he does in the entire episode. So... <laughs> Uh, we do get uh, sort of a postscript as we get uh, as we get uh, static and gear once again at night uh, s- flying around Dakota and they see that or actually it's I guess it's, yeah, it's Virgil Richie. and Richie. Just it's Virgil and Richie at the end. That's right. They're walking through uh, Dakota at nighttime and they look up and see their billboard now advertising the hero sign featuring static and gear. And they sort of have a, a nice little chuckle about uh the fame going to people's heads and how uh, how quickly that can affect them but uh, stating that uh, they clearly weren't affected by that as Richie mentions that maybe static is a static's name is a little bit larger on the marquee so and uh, that ends our uh, our episode as we get uh, we get things wrapped up there um absolutely Let's talk about it, Liam. How, what do you think of the plot? I, it's I love this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was so fun. A lot of it, and we'll certainly talk about that in voice acting later, is due to this Bernie Rast sleazy reality show producer character. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think he's a he's a riot in every in every scene. The bit where he pays the kids to look sad outside his window <laughs> to trick Static into doing the show is so funny. Mm-hmm. That's such a funny idea. Um, I loved that. Uh, I I like the idea. I like Starburst uh, as a as a character. The fact that it turns out to be Bernie's lowly assistant is great um yeah i think this is a this is a really fun episode the the static gear argument breakup feels (laughs) a little forced (laughs) and i feel like we've done this several times agreed (laughs) uh already um in various seasons so i don't know that we needed that part i guess it gives you a reason for static and gear to not figure out sooner that starburst is you know, stealing Static's power through some technological, because, you know, Static's on his own. He's not as smart as when, you know, Richie's there to help him figure stuff out. I guess that's something there, but maybe you could have, you know, <laughs> figured figured out another another B-plot or another reason why they couldn't figure it out. Um, like, I don't know, like he has another device that like scrambles backpack or something. So Richie's not not able to scan him properly or something i don't know i'm just you know throwing out my my, my armchair quarterbacking now but that's that's kind of my my thought is like i liked every part of this the ending that it turns out that he's not a bang baby and then he's uh you know this has this weird like tech harness i think is kind of fun and then yeah that that final bit where they unmask him and he's doing his big villain monologue and then bernie just gets a phone call and walks away from him it's so freaking funny (laughs) it is good um yeah so i uh I, I really enjoyed this episode uh like i said i could have done without the the virgil and uh and richie uh split a p- portion of it so um for that reason i still came away with a pretty strong uh eight out of ten for my plot score nice um i went with a six out of ten and the reason why i did is just i i do love uh you know i do love bernie i think bernie's funny um and i love that plot point but i just i think that the like you said the third or fourth time probably now 
at minimum that we've mm-hmm. seen the oh we're no longer going to be friends thing and this did feel very low stakes based on it like i get that richie wasn't having as good a time and he's mm. trying to like draw the line but they didn't make it i don't feel like they made it so overtly that static was kind of becoming hollywood for lack of a better term like he was trying to like he is like hot dogging a little bit when he gets him to chase him across t- town to the power grid and he's going to tie up in the power lines and he thinks he's right. smart and um to, but to me, I, yeah to me it's that that f- the first fight they have it should be that when they're both still together that you know static is trying to be really flashy and have this big battle and then either somebody else is in danger and Richie has to like step in and save someone because Virgil is careless. Right. And then when he, you know, yells at Virgil for that, Virgil won't, doesn't want to hear it. But as it stands, it's like, well, well, he was a little bit like flashy and a little bit uh, obnoxious, but yeah, it doesn't feel like we we don't see like that much. I mean, we hear him complain about like they wouldn't let him on set before, <laughs> before his uh you know before he before they go off to patrol the first time but yeah it doesn't feel like the the stakes are high enough for them to have that big blowout argument after the first fight Mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of that's kind of where i was i was leaning it was like i i think the bones of it are there and if you're going to do this if you're going to rehash that that storyline again of like you know something comes between them and they have to go on the outs then that's fine but it feels like it, the stakes should have been a little bit higher for it because it is not, it doesn't feel worthy of them not being friends or, or Richie sort of stop, stomping off um, in anger about it. Like it's not as overtly static's not overtly misbehaving or like giving mm-hmm. in or being starstruck or, or whatever, being obsessed with, with like the show off style of, you know, whatever it's just so i didn't think that that was as effective and the rest of the episode is interesting i think that i like the idea of it not being a bang baby but also the way that's it's not really clear i i don't feel it's very clear i get that they're saying that it's the microphone and the power pack but it the connection really isn't made clear how they made that connection how did they they're looking at the footage but how did they make up – they kind of just use a throwaway line when Static comes back and is like, oh, yeah, Richie Richie had the device scan. Well, how did he connect that to the backpack that the other – that Starburst was wearing? Like how did they discover that that was the – that was the thing that was draining the powers. I that I didn't I didn't maybe I missed it, but I, it didn't seem to be very clear as to how that was that was laid out. So, um, yeah. So for those reasons, I, th- I felt like there were a couple of plot holes because of that. A couple of things that they relied on a little bit too much, maybe for the series as a whole that feel kind of overdone at this time. But yeah, it's it is a fun episode. That's not to say that there aren't bright points or I, I love that it's something a little bit different. It's it's a bang it's bang baby of the week's swerve, sort of. Like you mm-hmm. at the end it's not actually a bang baby. So um and of course like it, for me it was like, okay, this is very obviously going to be the intern that is that is turns out to be Starburst. But it for a kid that you, your mind might be blown like holy cow like mm-hmm. oh it's the guy that was in the, getting the coffee at the beginning like no wonder so there i i do love that that's his motivation and and bernie bernie cutting him off at the end not really learning his lesson to treat him any differently i, I thought was pretty great too so yeah for all those reasons uh six out of ten uh just a little bit lower i don't think enough for the for the uh disagreement alarm uh, just yet <laughs> All right, Liam, let's move on to our next category, which is going to be animation and visuals. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dong Wu Animation is mm-hmm. uh, is credited for this week. And uh, Dong Wu, uh, it's uh, not, <laughs> not the animation studio that did last week's episode that we were not uh, huge fans of. But uh, I think this episode... From start to finish, you can tell right away. Like this, this should have been and may be the A team of 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 Static season three and four going forward because they really seem to kind of hit the uh, character models really well. Things move uh, pretty well. I love the action scenes between Starburst and and Static. Um, 
I guess before we get into the actual action, though, you want to talk about the Starburst character look? I think he looks pretty awesome. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I immediately went to, um, like, I guess this is like the classic uh, Pyro from the X Men. Mm hmm. That's um, a good the call. Orange, orange and yellow costume with all the wires and stuff coming off of the like the pack on the back. Um, that's kind of what it screamed to me. Obviously, he doesn't he has the just like kind of the regular old like sleeve mask on his head. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I really like that design. The uh, the you know he's got like a he's you know classic superhero fighting villain with same powers but slightly different color. You know he's got yellow electricity, mm-hmm. and then instead of a static saucer, he's just floating around on this weird little star thing, which is really <laughs> which is really neat as well. I thought so. Yeah, it's a really really catching, really eye popping design. Um, and and kind of a fun different uh, splash of color in the uh, in the episode with with him in there. Yeah, absolutely. He uh, he branded properly as a supervillain. Your branding <laughs> is very important. He went with the star shaped uh, saucer to uh, to fly around on. So as Starburst, that was very very important. Um, yeah, there were a couple of things I think in their fight scenes. I love the the scene where they ended up you know, fighting at the the power station and static gets all tied up in the wires and that kind of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, the contrasting of their their powers kind of going at it, even though it's giant beams, they're just shooting out of their hands at each other. It is kind of cool when you get that meeting of the of the two beams together. It reminds me of when, uh, you know, Green Lantern and Sinestro are kind of going mm-hmm. at it and their various battles, whether in Superman or in Justice League or, um, you know, any time that uh, Superman's Superman's heat vision matches up against something, just like two mm-hmm. strong energy forces blasting into each other uh, is is pretty awesome. And I, I love that, you know, as they're kind of standing there and Static is trying to turn up the inti- uh, intensity, he, he kind of shifts his his position changes with how he's standing to kind of articulate that he's kind of giving it more effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of that I really enjoyed. Um, I think the... Uh, I think, uh, what else did I have here? Uh, I love, uh, the, the scene where I think it's, uh, on the way to the power station, actually, where Starburst is chasing static. You get this really unique overhead shot of the city and it sort of resembles, uh, like an old time, I would say old time, but like, uh, maybe like an 80s video game where it was like mm-hmm. a 2D overhead shot of just the two energy b- balls moving around, <laughs> sort of like a Pac-Man-esque looking yeah. overhead shot or, you know, even early, uh, you know, early the early versions of Grand Theft Auto or something like that, where it's just yeah. an overhead shot. Uh, heck, even uh, the Adventures of Batman and Robin uh, for Super oh, Nintendo yeah. with the, uh, the Batmobile uh, level, you know, just... <laughs> really cool overhead shot um and then you know you you kind of see the the helicopters at the end of that shot kind of pass in front of the screen uh both off to the side there i really really liked that overhead shot there very very unique way of uh of detailing that rather than just having the guys you know fly past the screen or something like that something you definitely di- didn't see all the time uh and uh yeah i th- i think uh i think the fight scenes really though are the standouts between the you know it's all it all takes place in the air i like the opening fight scene as we said uh with with uh with puff and onyx at the beginning uh it takes place at night you don't really get a whole lot of nighttime action uh especially fight scenes it seemed for for static so this one taking place at night with this in this really unique setting of dakota that we really haven't I don't remember seeing before with these, you know, neon billboards and, uh, you know, different different looks that you kind of give the the characters with this shading at night and stuff like that. I, I really enjoyed that. And then you kind of get that bookend in it at the end in the end scene with uh, Static and Richie walking around and seeing the billboards and and stuff. But I think for the most part, this episode is really nice to look at. There are a couple things that I noticed where characters are kind of. Uh, pardon the pun, but static. They're kind of just standing there. It's almost like it's almost like sometimes I think the the animators for, for this show took the turnarounds that were done for the characters and just animated a face on them. Like I don't know if it, <laughs> I I don't remember seeing that in comparison on the other DCAU shows. I don't know if it's a budget thing, if it's just easier for them to kind of plug that in. Because the characters just kind of stand like you see the turnarounds for those characters sometimes. Static, especially in that scene where he's talking to Bernie 
uh, and kind of get in the pitch in the first scene. He's just kind of standing there with his arms at his sides. It just kind of looks very unnatural. So uh, nitpicking. Uh, but overall, I really enjoyed the episode as visually. I think it's very interesting to look at from start to finish. Uh, and the animation flows and looks really great. Uh, so for all those reasons, I gave it an 8 out of 10. What about you? Uh, yeah, I gave it a, an eight out of ten. I think yeah, we we covered all the all the big points here. I think there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of fun in this episode with a really unique villain and uh, and with some of the a lot of a lot of aerial battles too, which I think is fun. And then uh, it's fun to see uh, the way they visualize like uh, Puff's powers at the beginning of the episode and that opening little fight scene is fun. She's like shooting like puff darts out of the uh-huh. cloud again another character who's basically magic depending on <laughs> what they need but yeah that's a that's a that's a fun sequence as well yeah lots of uh lots of great stuff there i i like the way that static also decides that uh he's gonna kind of overtake her and uses uses some ingenuity to wrap her up uh as she's sort of contained by mm-hmm. gears uh, technology a, a, a fun fun uh fun little sequence there that they threw in at the beginning to kind of kick things off so yeah unsurprisingly pretty strong scores from both of us with uh, 8 out of 10 for both absolutely all right, Liam, let's move on to our next category, which is, of course, going to be music. And once again, we have Richard Richie Wolf responsible for the music for this week. And it is once once again time for everyone's favorite segment. And that's the part where I read some of the lyrics for <laughs> this week's episode. So kicking things off right away, we had a uh, we had a, a song with the words, hey, you got the sway. Don't look away. Get out of my face. Take a word of advice. Make a move. Make a move. Make a move. <laughs> make a move. Make a move. Make a move. Get out of the space. And that was the uh, that was the scene with Onyx and uh, and Puff, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we followed that up with uh, with uh, Don't look back. No time to waste. That might actually might be the continuation of that same song. It sounded like a DMX ripoff to me. Mm-hmm. It was a very, very like sort of like aggressive shouting, uh, sort of sort of rhyming rap. Um, uh, let's see what else. Then we had uh, we had a little short tone. Uh, love, love could be love. Uh, that was that was I think uh, once we were maybe rolling in on on. Uh, on Bernie for the first time. And then yeah, there's like a destiny's child when, when <laughs> static sitting in the chair, that's just this like real, like soft or like TLC or something that comes in like real soft, like R and B with a, with a woman singing. That's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had uh precious as stones. Words can hit home. I think that might be the, the same yeah, song. I think that's the one. <laughs> that was the destiny's child ripoff. Uh, then we had what I guess was starbursts theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, little by little, gonna take you down. Step by step, <laughs> we're gonna take you out. Little by little, we're gonna take you down. Step by step, we're gonna take you out. I Bow down like... downtown. Bow down like... downtown. My, my only good plan. I want to say they used that for Hot Streak or somebody before. Like that I feel one like sounds very familiar. Step by step, I'm gonna take you down. We've definitely talked about that in an episode before, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> Yes. And then later on that came back as it's my turn. It's my time. It was a very similar song to that. Um, you know what? I, you just, you have to embrace it at some point, I suppose. And <laughs> while it is always, I maintain that the lyrics are always distracting uh, and take me out. I was able to watch this uh, at a, in a sort of, less rushed time than sometimes my review uh time is for an episode so i was able to kind of pause and write the lyrics down and uh yeah i i just i'm just imagining richard richie wolf sitting there and like all right we have a it's we have wolfie a scene wolf, by the way what's that it's richard wolfie wolf no oh, why am i call him richard richie wolf, richard richie wolf. <laughs> <It's> very important <laughs> that you not disparage the man by getting his nickname wrong Apologies to Mr. Wolf. I, I, I all sincerity, uh, Wolfie Wolf. Uh, I just imagine him penning like you know he's just penning this down. It's like the the meme of the guy writing and the papers catching on fire when he's doing it. It's like or the guy at the organ. It's like all right, Rich, Rich, Richie, Richie, 
listen wolfie we just need you to write a song nothing crazy we just need you to write a song uh that uh involves you know this sort of sounds like a dmx ripoff and then he writes this piece and it's just the meme of the guy at the piano on fire just just incredible uh so i ended up giving music a seven out of ten what about you yeah, I gave it the same score. Like I said, I think I think I, I came down a little bit because we're we're reusing the step by step theme, but mm-hmm. uh, I did enjoy that. There's like a really funny uh, like piano interlude when when uh, when Bernie is showing Static the the underprivileged youths, <laughs> bringing like this really sappy, sad piano music, which is really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's some fun little flourishes there, and in, in addition to all of our lyrical, uh, uh, lyrical fun. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a good solid effort from uh, from Mister from Mister Wolf this week. Tremendous. All right, Liam, let's move on to our final category, which is going to be our voice actors and actresses. Not a huge cast this week. In fact, we have one of our main cast doing multiple voices, and then uh, of course we have uh, we have a couple of returning. Uh, actors and actresses and one actor who's uh who's all also already played another role in the dcau so let's go ahead and uh, recap this week's voice cast shall we that's right so just in uh, some minor roles we do have briefly we have a uh, michelle morgan as sharon um just in just in the one scene here <laughs> playing another one of my favorite bits i don't think we talked about this in plot but playing like the little like the tech who's setting mm-hmm. static up with his harness is mm-hmm. uh, is Bumper Robinson, who we've we've talked about a few times before. He was uh, destruct and slipstream on this show. Okay. Also did voices on uh, Batman Beyond as well. So uh, we've talked about him a few times. I think that scene where where the tech is so disgusted by static <laughs> is so funny too. Like, again, just the the idea of like the the professionals. These. He's a, like he's a union man. He's got to put. He's got to be the one that applies this, and he's got to deal with this this punk kid superhero coming in, coming onto his set. Like he's so <laughs> over it all. I think he's. It's like it's one scene, and they and they, I think they when they're when they're sneaking into the uh, into the studio to review the footage, we see him walk by, and he's mumbling about something else. <laughs> like he's just this tech who hates his job is a is the role Mister Robinson was born to play. So I wanted to give him. Uh, give him some credit there but uh we also have uh returning as puff we have kimberly brooks uh it's fun to see her and uh and a man a man who really does a lot of heavy listening in this episode uh playing onyx of course kevin michael richardson he also plays robert hawkins of course virgil's dad and he's also playing uh bernie rast in this episode uh the the man can do it all another actor we uh, we talk about all the time you know gladly can never say enough good things about him, but uh, some get to show a little versatility here. He's got, he's got his, you know, his, his stern, calm dad voice when he's talking to Sharon on the couch. He's got his, you know, his big monster voice when he's onyx, just maybe has a little bit of a, uh, you know, effect added to it. And then he's got his, his sleazy, uh, his sleazy producer uh, voice when he's Bernie Rast. Uh, a great, uh, a great showcase for Mr. Richardson. A hundred percent. Yeah. I dare say almost unrecognizable in comparison. He, you know, it's pitched up a little bit. He, you know, he talks at certainly a different cadence and he just gives that feel of like, as you said, ne- neither of us are, are Hollywood insiders by any means, uh, mm-hmm. but it just gives you that, prototypical what you would expect somebody that is a director to sort of be uh characterized as just fast talking very dismissive uh saying whatever he has to say in order to get his project done only concerned about the you know the product that he's making so yeah uh unsurprisingly uh giving that role to a voice casting or you know a voice acting legend in in kevin michael richardson was clearly rewarded with a with an unforgettable performance and uh, thankfully it uh, will not be the last that we hear of this bernie rast absolutely thankfully we have a a couple more appearances of uh, of bernie down the line to talk about and then playing our other uh, or our main villain of the peach uh, of the piece is uh, david faustino who I believe we've talked about once or twice before. Yeah, Actually, he I played, know we have. He played Sean Miller on that uh, episode of uh, of Batman Beyond: The Last Resort, the, right. the one with the school. You can and check that plays, one out in the archives. And he plays Scruffy in the Zeta Project, <laughs> which I believe was like the episode. I think I think Zeta meets a 
like a gang of hippies that's very clearly the yes. Scooby Doo gang. If I yes. if I if I do if I do remember correctly, but uh, who could remember? As how Zeta dare Project? how dare anyone require me to remember an episode of the Zeta Project that I've already reviewed? That's not fair. It's not in my contract. But here we are. <laughs> but yes, uh, playing playing Star Wars again. He doesn't get much to do. Like he's kind of funny playing off of Mr. Richardson in the opening scene. But his his time to shine is that final scene. It's also actually David Faustino. Uh, was uh, Bud Bundy on right. Married with Children. Uh, also has done a ton of voice work over the years, uh, Legend of Korra and uh, a few other uh, big Nickelodeon shows and Cartoon Network shows. So a very, very seasoned voice actor as well. But uh, yeah, he's like, he gets one, he gets one real scene where, <laughs> where he gets to do some acting and, uh, and he's great. At, he's great in that, that unhinged uh, tirade he goes on at the end where he's, yelling about uh yelling about uh how bernie didn't treat him right and wouldn't wouldn't read a screenplay even though he kept promising and and then uh yells yelling about putting whole milk in his in his coffee or whatever like it's it's a very funny scene oh 100 percent. yeah that's the it, it's very subtle because he said we don't really get we don't really get much of him at the beginning he's very understated he's clearly trying to play very timid He's he's just the intern, uh, but then once the mask is taken off and he kind of gets to go in on on Bernie, he uh, he really gets to show some of those acting chops, and it's it's funny. The whole that whole interaction is funny and worth worth checking out if you if you uh, if you don't check anything else out for the episode. That's uh, certainly <laughs> maybe the the high mark of of our voice acting for the episode. Absolutely, and then of course we have our two leads, uh, Phil Lamar as Static, Jason Marston as Richie slash Gear. Uh, like I said, we talked about for plot reasons. I was kind of rolling my eyes when they're having to have yet another best friend breakup argument, but that's certainly not our actor's fault. Mm-hmm. Um, they they do well with what they're given. Um, some of the bits of uh, you know you know Static has some funny quips again, playing off of. Uh, Mr. Richardson as as Bernie Rass certainly like it's a it's a good it's a good outing from them but uh, again I feel like they're let down perhaps most of all by our by our uh, our 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 yet again shoehorned in uh, <laughs> best friend breakup uh, so uh, nothing wrong with their performance but that's kind of the majority of of what they get to do this week unfortunately yeah acrimony aside uh, or you know. Th- needless acrimony aside i i think both of them do do exactly what they're asked to do and and uh, of course we've sung their praises uh deservingly so uh many many a time and and uh that if you're interested in hearing a full breakdown of uh of either mr marston or mr lamar's performances you can check out one of those episodes but i didn't think there was anything uh specifically that stood out as a as a great moment of acting between the two of them uh but uh it, you know it wasn't asked of them i don't feel as we both said it was more it was certainly more the focus was on uh bernie he's kind of a a big shadow to cast across this episode so uh yeah that's uh it's, it's more about the plot than i'd say than anything about anybody's uh acting ability or performance yeah i agree yeah it's, it's yeah it's nobody's uh nobody's nobody's fault on the on the acting side Certainly not Andrea Romano's fault as the as the voice director, but yeah, not a not a great uh, stuff for our our lead actors to work with. I ended up settling on an eight out of ten for my voice score. Yeah, I gave it the exact same score actually, eight out of ten. Uh, it's uh, I think I think as we mentioned, uh, you know, Kevin Michael Richardson's performance is the is the the show stealer for sure, uh, and even David Faustino's one little rambling bit that he gets at the end, and then the two mm-hmm. of them together. So. Uh, two of them interacting is is really the standout for the episode. So, but still, strong scores from both of us. All right, Liam. Well, that will begin to total things up for this week. And totaling up my scores, I end up with a twenty nine out of forty. What about you? And I am just a couple points higher at a thirty one out of forty. Nice. All right, where do we stand? I I think we kind of already have our answer because we've kind of 
very, I mean, we've already kind of given it away here. Bernie returns. Uh, Bernie's a big part of a couple of episodes uh, coming up. We're feeling up here. the burn. Uh, still, <laughs> there's still more burn to be felt on this show. That's right. To, uh, to bar the colloquialism. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd say uh, overall for DCAU, DCAU as a whole universal uh, impact, not, uh, not a big impact here. Starburst yeah. doesn't return. I, we, I was we, like thinking watching this. I'm always thinking about this after after the fact bernie should have been the flash's agent in that <laughs> in whatever that's the, the eclipse yeah. episode yeah that's good like we could have definitely worked him in somewhere in justice league or jlu uh absolutely. for sure absolutely yes a little bit of a little bit of uh blending of our of our cities here and uh and shows would have helped there uh, indubitably but uh yeah i'd say as far as static is concerned that gets a thumbs up because we have bernie returning uh, although uh, we don't get a starburst return, we of course, you know, this is Onyx and and uh, and Puff we get in this episode, so they're they're returning mm-hmm. characters. So I'd give it a, th- a one thumb up, and it's certainly uh, when it comes to the the episode as a whole, it's certainly an entertaining episode from start to finish. Albeit maybe some plot crutches that uh, <laughs> you know we we pointed out already but you know hard to argue with us both giving us a a close to 30 score and not saying it should be at least one thumb up oh yeah absolutely i think it's like that introduces characters that comes back and it's just i think every and this is not always the case for for static or or any of our shows when they go into the more uh comedic uh lighter episodes like this every joke in this episode pretty much hits like <laughs> there are some really, really good bits throughout this episode. And again, a lot of it does trade on you having at least some passing awareness of, you know, of how, how things work in, in Hollywood, I suppose. But I, I, I just had, I just had so much fun with this, with this Bernie Rass character. Uh, I think that alone is like a, that's a, that's a, that's a one thumb up for me for that. There we go. All right, Liam, we'll begin to wrap things up for this week's episode. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget, as we mentioned at the top, we would love your support for the podcast. And there are different ways that you can do so. The easiest way is to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app. And if it allows you to leave a five-star review to do so, that will put us uh, further up in people's algorithms when they're searching for things or looking for podcasts. Uh, We already know that it works because we've gotten reviews of people that have discovered it. So keep on leaving those five-star reviews. And uh, once again, if you leave one on Apple Podcasts and it's five stars, you live within the continental United States, we'll go ahead and send you a little thank you gift uh, just for taking a couple minutes to to do so. So uh, you can also support the podcast by uh, checking out the links in the show notes. There's one link to support us directly financially if you want to uh, support the podcast monthly. We have some supporters that do that each and every month, and we thank them for putting their hard-earned dollars out there to uh to encourage us you know when uh when we're feeling like hey maybe these uh maybe these podcasts these static episodes uh it, that don't feature crossovers maybe nobody's listening to these but uh then you know what we're reminded that people do listen and uh and do care so we thank you for uh for our our monthly supporters you can join them using the link in the show notes you can also check out the store in our show notes uh, there will be some new, I promise you, at some point in 2024, there will be a new piece of merchandise on that store. <laughs> so you can check that out. If you haven't checked it out already, maybe uh, all the merchandise will be new to you. So you can always check that out as well if you haven't reviewed, uh, look, taken a look at that stuff. But you can also follow us on your favorite social media site. We are at DCAU Review on Twitter now x and uh, also on instagram you can interact with us there we've got some great things uh that are going out there we're always not only us but we're interacting with all the other dcau accounts that are up there the fine folks over at world's finest and watchtower database and we're all just one big happy family over there talking dcau and uh if you want to join the conversation uh, you can do so either that or slide into our DMs. Uh, we have people every week that talk to us about their thoughts on the episode just by sending us a little message. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'll interact with you if you do it that way as well. And then, uh, yeah, that's uh, those are the best ways to do so. Liam, uh, we each and every week on our social media, we'll usually preview the episode that we have on our upcoming episode. And, uh, of course, we always give a little sneak peek here at the end, though, for those that are listening. So let's talk about next week's 
final episode of static for this month at least that is right and uh this is one i'll just say we have been uh we've been waiting chomping at the bit i'd say absolutely uh very excited to announce next week we will be for the finale of static month we will be reviewing the episode romeo in the mix which uh (laughs) as the episode's title may imply features a another uh patented static shock celebrity guest star playing themselves and that being in this case it's it's the the guy who did uh static's theme song for seasons three and four that being lil romeo uh, we are excited to talk about that episode next week. And as a bonus, it's another Bernie Rast episode. So we don't have to wait long at all to uh, to get back and uh, and start feeling the burn again next week, along with uh, with our, our our first chance to see uh, Lil Romeo as a as a voice actor. I can't imagine he had done much by this point. So it should uh, it should be quite a show if, uh, if for no other reason than uh, the always fun celebrity guest star playing themselves trope there we go looking forward to it it is going to be fantastic but until then i'm cal and i'm liam and we will talk to you on the next episode of the dcau review bye bye